Yeah, I think you could say that that the essence of of love we would call Christ, and then Christianity is a religion that was developed as a defense against the Christ. That's like one of those quotable quotes that goes in a book. <laughs> Christianity was a religion developed as a defense against the Christ. So, it's just a word, and... That, that wasn't the intention of it, was it? It's the ego's world. You think it's... If, it, if a beam of light comes and says you're pure love, you're innocent, you're sinless, and you're perfect, you think it's going to just take that laying down? No, it's too clever. It's too clever and ingenious to, to simply go, oh, you got me. <laughs> it's like, oh no, this is my world and I will make up a defense against the Christ. And it's the same with, um, to some extent, you could say that we're not just poking fun at Christianity, but Buddhism, uh, the Buddha nature is just pure oneness. Did you ever notice that Buddhism has a lot of rituals? You, you go to a Buddhist retreat, you better be ready for some, some rituals, because there's a lot of them. We can say that about all the religions, you know, Islam, you know, Muhammad and, and the prophets, but, but I don't, I've never heard of it. I guess they haven't done that, that, like, you know, Allah, they don't call, there's not something called Allahism. I'm an Allahismist, or um, I'm a goddess. Uh, you know, they pick, the ego picks on something in form. So Muhammad was a prophet, a man. So Muhammadism or Islam, you see how it takes something in form and it twists it around and turns it into something linear, to some kind of organized linear thing. The same thing with Christ, Christianity. I'm a Christ. Buddha. I'm a Christ. I think you've probably got up. To this. You've probably got up and said, "I am the the Christ." <laughs> they go running. <laughs> but but in the end, so what can we say about this? Well, all it takes is a tweak in the mind, where you tweak this thought about religion from a linear theology into an experience. So I've got no problem with the word religion. It's just that in my experience now, it's been reinterpreted to be peace of mind. What religion are you? I don't understand the question. If, if peace of mind doesn't take on specific forms, it's just a state of mind. So the question is kind of like, what is the marital status of the number five? What is your religion? I am peace. Okay, yeah, but what is your religion? I am peace. It's like, who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. You know, the old comedy skit. You could go back and forth with, but what is your religion? Is that the question you get asked? No, usually they don't even, it's beyond that now. They just assume I am whatever they think I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't defend that. <laughs> I don't even begin to go there. Well, imagine if you're out traveling and you're sparkling and shining and someone comes up and they, you have this great rapport and you're chatting and, and they feel the love and the connection and then they just say whatever words. You know, you're a Christian, aren't you? Or you're a Buddhist, aren't you? Or you're such and such. It could even be something like, something more extreme like, you are so happy. You don't believe in God, do you? <laughs> you don't even have to defend that one. <laughs> Because God is not to be believed in or not believed in, but to be known. It's an experience. So the Holy Spirit will use all the words and the symbols just to nurture that joining. Not to throw up a concept. As soon as you throw up a concept, then, oh, it can seem to be attacked and defended very easily. Because that's what happens with concepts. You have division. You have more division. The Spirit is not a concept. We're back to that unlearning. We're here to just unlearn all of the concepts and to not be identified with any of them. And you see how freeing that is. You know? If you're not identified as a man or a woman, then how could this construct of sexism bother you? If, if 
In fact, you can even go deeper. Um, let's get beyond like man and woman or male and female. How about masculine and feminine? You see how that's still part of the ego's dualistic concepts. And if you get identified with one of those qualities over the other, then you can get defensive. If you're identified with masculine qualities and tendencies, and someone walks up to you and says, Oh, you're so feminine. <laughs> or you're identified with the feminine qualities, and someone comes up and says, You are really masculine. You see? Scotty, shields up. We need power for, you know, you, <laughs> you're going to get the defense shields up right away because they're saying something that doesn't relate to the way that you perceive yourself. So, in uh, anthropology, I think it was, they came up with this concept called androgyny, which I kind of resonated with because androgyny is the sense that you are neither male or female, masculine or feminine, you are none of those qualities. You are beyond the qualities. But there is one that can use the qualities in the most helpful way. And that is the, the presence of God. So, so androgyny is just simply calling upon uh, qualities that serve the whole. In any specific instance, whatever qualities would serve the whole, they're used. It's kind of a cool idea, you know, when you think of it. it you know, it's like, uh, when, like when Dale was talking about your relationship last night and you said, I am I'm tired of, of feeling, like feeling like the man, playing the man role. You know, and then, you know, you can say, okay then, I don't, I don't have to identify with that. And you can do that with anything. If somebody says to you, you know, you are too, you're too intellectual, you can just go back inside and go, oh, okay, don't, I'm not going to identify my beingness with being intellectual or with being too this or too that. People will ask me, they'll say, which is it? Is, is the path to God rational or emotional? And I'd say, rational or emotional, it's, it's both. But you see how in this world, those two seem to be opposites. Jesus says there's only two emotions, love and fear. And, and Jesus also says that his curriculum is rational, because it's based on the premise of the Holy Spirit. So it's loving and rational. <coughs> it's emotional and rational. <coughs> See how this pops all those things, or you know, the head is oftentimes associated with the intellect, the heart is associated with the emotions, and if you go around and you, you talk to the ones that say, we are the touchy-feely people, and we have one message for you, get out of your head and get into your heart. Then you go to the scientists, the philosophers, the ones that have a great appreciation for Socrates, Plato, rationality and everything. And they're like saying, would you get over this feeling crap <laughs> and, and get into something that is cognitively meaningful. <laughs> you see, it's two different experiences of the same thing. It's everyone's going through an awakening, but it's just these different semantics just get in the way. So that's what we're here for, we're here for that.